It was quite obvious Lucifer controlled the world. I accepted him as my ruler and my lord and my hero, one that I would want to serve. I was influenced by demons to want to write a book about Lucifer and how great he is and his side of the story. And I was getting more and more evil in my heart. I mutilated myself, branding myself with satanic symbols. Every night I would have night terrors and it felt so real, like I was being tortured. When I gave my life to Christ, there was no going back. If I go back, I'm dead. Hello and welcome back to the Almost False Podcast where I interview regular people with incredible stories. Today's conversation is with the gentleman that used to worship Lucifer. He explained how he got to Luciferianism in the first place and how he got out of the darkness associated with it. We talked about many things related to spirituality in the new age and had a fascinating conversation about his life experiences. It's a short one, but a good one. So let's jump right in with ex-Luciferian, Zachary. How did you make that jump from taking drugs recreationally to more of the new age and the spirituality around it? Yes. So I met someone, I was working at Subway and one of my friends, she was an older lady, but she knew a medium and she invited all of us to go to her house and, you know, talk with the medium. And, you know, I didn't know much about mediums, but you know, I was interested, you know, when you're 17, you're young and impressionable and you're curious. So I, I went and uh, all the things that the, you know, we were at her house and the medium was very nice, very elegant, nice person. And she said a lot of interesting things, you know, that really caught my attention, including things like my past, like I was a past pilot or stuff like that, that just really caught my attention. And then I, I invited her to my house to have more one-on-one -on -one conversation. And she really went into uh, like extraterrestrials, UFOs, ghosts, reptilians, stuff like that, introduced me to David Icke. And that's really what got me started because you hear all these cool things and it really catches your attention. And so that's really what got the ball rolling for me to really just want to look for the truth. I got real instantly addicted. I was, man, I was hooked. I wanted to know the truth. And so that's where my journey started that led me to eventually Luciferianism. Okay, so that sparked a curiosity inside of you. And then what did you do with that? Uh, well, so after that, she just disappeared. She even gave me her number and everything just disappeared. So I started looking for truth and all that. And the new age really caught my attention. It was quite interesting. You learn about Atlantis and astral projection and you know i started getting into astral projection do you want to explain what that is exactly basically in simple terms it's like you're if, like you hear this noise you you see this light and then all of a sudden it's like your spirit is leaving you and then you can go travel anywhere you would like uh, to planets different galaxies to different neighborhoods and it's so real you know um you also have like lucid dreaming where you have complete control of your dreams you can think you can do whatever and you can, it feels real. So this astro projection thing was not just an idea that you were interested in. This was something that you were practicing. Yeah. And I recommend no one do it. It's, it's just a gateway for demons to get into your life because it really is demonic. Uh, demons can put anything into your mind and really cause you to feel like you really experienced it. Okay. So, so that was your introduction to demons, to spirituality, but then Later, you got into Satanism and Luciferianism. Maybe you can explain if there's a difference between the two, if they're the same. But how did that transition work from you from New Age to Luciferianism? Well, eventually in my journey of looking for truth, and again, I, I, I just, I don't know, I have this spiritual sensitivity, but it was quite obvious Lucifer controlled the world. I don't know. When you have eyes to see and you're demonically influenced and if Satan allows you to see it, it, it's really quite obvious who rules the world uh, or the kingdoms of this world, should I say, the kingdoms of this world. And so that it was quite easy for me to see that. And I accepted that, you know, he's really good at deception. So he really made it sound like he was a good guy, that he was fighting the good fight, that he was a fighting against a, a dictator tyrant. And with Luciferianism, I, it's kind of weird. They They think of it as like a, a more elegant Satanism, right? Uh, I don't know how to explain it. It's like a lighter side of Satanism. 
it's not as dark, but it is a false light. And so that that's why I would say is the difference. One, it's just you go straight into the this dark, raw, satanic uh, magic and whatnot, and really worshiping this dark deity, you know, and deities, these demons. And then with Luciferianism, you know, you are looking for truth, you're looking for knowledge, but ultimately, it all leads you to complete darkness. So the Satanism, which what you describe as Satanism, the rituals, which uh, we hear here and there, sometimes it's not talked about a whole lot, but you weren't involved in that. You were more so, I don't know if worship is the right word, but you accepted Lucifer as your God. Is that right? Yeah, I, I accepted him as my ruler and my Lord and my hero, one that I would want to serve. And I never joined any secret societies. And I thank God, you know, I didn't trust anyone. And so I, I just am so blessed I didn't go any further than into secret societies and um, a lot of satanic practices that go really deep. And at that moment, I was just looking for truth. Okay. And what did that look like for you, the life of being a Luciferian? In concrete terms, what was it? Well, I guess you would say like Gnosticism, knowledge, looking for knowledge. That's what it was. I just wanted to look for knowledge for selfishness sake. I just wanted to grow in knowledge and knowledge is power. And that would just unlock more doors for me in my own selfish path. And so that that's why I would sum it up. It's just knowledge for the sake of knowledge for power. So what kind of knowledge were you learning about? Would, it Was it books? Was it something that everyone has access to? Because when we hear Luciferian, it's something very foreign to most of us. And so I'm asking the question because I'm sure that a lot of people have that same question of like, what does that even mean? Right. And so what, what I'm asking is for you in your life, what were the things that made you different than a regular person? as being Luciferian, apart from you wanting more knowledge to have power, just like you explained, but what were the actions that you were taking? So just looking through the internet, looking for information, but really getting into uh, witchcraft through drugs and whatnot, letting, allowing demons into me and what I would call spiritism, where I would get knowledge from the demons themselves, right? Now, I, did, I didn't go into any secret society where there was you know, Freemasons with all the those books and whatnot to really um, understand, perfect the royal art of witchcraft. But I did have demons influence my life where they would instantly give me the knowledge and guide me in the right direction where to look. And for me, I was looking through a lot of videos and uh, information online. And that being that that part of being influenced by demons, it's my understanding that it's not something that you started in your own family, but it happened with your parents, maybe more specifically with your dad. So I know that there's an event that happened, if you would be willing to share it, because I think it ties in very well with your story and maybe part of the reason why you started heading down that path later in life. Correct. Uh, like I keep bringing up, I have this spiritual sensitivity and I would say that came from my father. See, I didn't know growing up, but my mother eventually, you know, when I was growing up, I was, you know, I was in my teenage years, uh, late teenage years, 17 through 19, when my mom started sharing me stories, for instance, I'll, I'll share a couple of stories, like one time when they were driving and the lights would turn off and the, you know, as soon as they passed by, then it would turn back on. It happened as they continued to drive. My mom's like, what's going on? He's like, and then my father said, I'm controlling them stuff like that. And and then my father almost murdering my mother. Uh, she would see him with black eyes, completely demon possessed. And you, you really just don't get to that state unless you are very inf involved with uh, some dark things. And so it, with demons being within him, I wouldn't, you know, I would say that my, with my father and mother having me, it affected me in a very spiritual way an intimate level. Right. Because even if your father wasn't present in your life, he left when you were 10 or 11, you said in the beginning, he left, he wasn't influencing you. But the fact that it was your father, that was influences, maybe spiritual, probably 
that impacted you later in life, which maybe gave you this sensitivity to the spirituality, which eventually led to you without knowing doing the same thing or something very similar to your father, which is being willingly letting demons inside of you. Yep. You know, the sins of your parents affect you. Everything you eat, drink, what you see, where you live, it, it affects your children on a very intimate level. And that includes spiritual. So you were doing these things and you got deeper and deeper in your understanding because you were seeking for truth. And eventually you tried to, I don't know if you successfully did it, but at least you attempted to write a book of Lucifer. What does that mean? What's a book of Lucifer? What was the book that you were writing? Why were you writing it? And the whole process, can you explain that? Yes. So I was very, you know, I was influenced by demons to want to write a book about Lucifer and how great he is and uh, his story, his side of the story to share with people. Um, I wrote a good amount, but I was just feeling so convicted by the Holy Spirit. I didn't know it was the Holy Spirit, but, you know, with the Holy Spirit and with the God's angels working, it's, I just felt so convicted, like, this is not right. And so I, I threw it away. That was, you know, that was the start with this uh, tug and pull. And so I, I threw the information away. I, I threw it all away. Can you go more into that tug and pull? Because it's the first time that you're bringing uh, angels, God, and, and uh, Jesus. And there was this split inside of you, which maybe you can explain how that felt. But you were, just like you said, being tugged in both ways and not being sure which way to go, I guess. Yes. So even though my heart was hardened, there was still a part of me that really knew certain things that were wrong, like pedophilia and sacrifice of children and whatnot. And there's, it was just a part of me that knew this wasn't right and that I shouldn't share this with people. And so I, I threw that. And also in my journey, you know, God, God's angels are ever working and God leads you to certain videos or certain information to help guide you in the right direction. That's why he, he would show videos of ex-Satanists. It's like, wow. I mean, they were really deep into it and they realized the, the real right path is Jesus. And that's where it started guiding me in that direction. And then, you know, even though I was falling more into the side of Jesus, uh, Satan was working extra hard to get me more deep into sin, uh, drugs and sex and what, and just being more selfish. It's like every time Jesus tried to reach to me and guide me in the right direction, Satan worked extra hard to bring me back. And then there would always be more punishment. You know, you, you, you don't go into that realm and try to go out without there being negative consequences from the enemy from punishment, coercion, um, and whatnot. So it, it was like I was in a bubble, you know, and I was getting more and more evil in my heart, even leading to the point where wanting to get into some really, and I won't explain it, but deep and evil things. Well, that's something that I actually want to touch on because like we talked about with your dad and that one incident that, that you mentioned, but I, I don't think it was the only one, but you mentioned that time where you tried to kill your mom and, and his eyes went all black, that kind of demonic rage. And that's something that you experience too. What does that feel like? Why did that happen? And was it something that was reoccurring with you? Yes, I was easily angry. I, I, I just, when I didn't get my way or not, it's hard to explain like it consumes you. You have this anger and you just want to destroy and uh, you want to hurt. And it's like, I, you know, some people say they have tunnel vision, but like, I don't know how to explain it. You just have this great desire to just harm and do evil. You just want to hurt people. You want to destroy. And uh, so, yeah, I would have moments of wrath, great wrath. It's like to hold it back is extremely painful. You know, even in my Christian walk where you know, sometimes I'll have this just demonic wrath going into me and I don't want to do anything evil or I, I don't want to, but it's like, it's so painful because you just want to do something. You want to destroy something. You know, you want to yell at someone or something, but you, you know, you're not, you won't do it, you know, 
uh, as a child of God, you don't want to hurt people. So it's extremely painful and extremely selfish. And that path to Luciferianism, because we're going to get into your conversion uh, testimony in a little bit, but you were probably getting things that you wanted, right? You were getting pleasure and stuff, but there was also this other side of it. And you suffered through your fair share of depression at the same time that you were going through these things, right? Yeah. When you have demons in your life, again, it, it can only lead to pain, suffering, and misery. And it's just a way of Satan to control you more. You know, it's a way of, you know, when you are, when you succumb to sin, it only enslaves you more and it conditions you more to want to cling on to it. And you no longer can make decisions of your own. Like, for instance, I would, you know, smoke cigarettes. And then I was reading this uh, ex Satanist testimony from South Africa. And I was like, you know, I don't want to smoke cigarettes anymore. And then I put it down. And then within two minutes, it's like it's so painful. I, I need to have that cigarette. And so with sin and with Satan, you know, you become enslaved with these things that you allow into your life. And with a lot of people that go through depression and severe episodes of depression, it eventually leads them to suicidal thoughts at the very least. Did you experience that? Correct. I have many cuts on my arms. I mutilated myself with branding myself with satanic symbols. So yeah, you do get suicidal and you get very depressed. Again, the drugs don't help. You know, they may relieve, but then you're just worse off and more enslaved. And so, yeah, no, I, even to this day, I deal with depression and anxiety. It's completely destructive, self-destructive. And the drugs you said don't help. Uh, no, it, it's, temporarily. You, well, yeah, you did mention that as kind of like a, some sort of, of pain reliever, but at the same time, sometimes that, that goes too far. And I think I remember correctly that your life was spared multiple times from drug overdoses. Correct. So the big one was Xanax. I don't know if you know much about Xanax. I've heard about it, yes. But when you take it, and you take enough of it, so it's supposed to relieve anxiety. But when you take a lot of it, it puts you into a zombified state. You remember nothing. Your memory is gone. And when I would take Xanax, and be in the zombified state, it's like I, I would just go grab a bunch and overdose. Uh, I should have died. And I wouldn't doubt if Satan was the one that influenced me to go want to go steal the medication and take it. And if it wasn't for God, I, I, I should have died, but I didn't. So I want to start diving more into the part where you got out of Luciferianism, because that's also a great story in and of itself. You explained how that started by watching videos of ex-Satanists. When was it that you finally got out of that? I don't know if it's out, but you that, that tug and pull war where you decided to leave Satan's side and go follow God. Yeah, so it's like I, I just got very self-centered, sensual, and it eventually got to the point where... I was addicted to pornography, addicted to drugs. And I, you know, I would keep the Bible next to me, but I used it as like a talisman, you know, a thing it would protect me. Okay. But eventually my cell phone started to die. And so I tried charging it. It didn't work. Eventually it died. And then I felt this strong conviction, you know, conviction that this like inside voice saying, if not now, when? And then I was like, no, you're absolutely right. And then I decided to pick up the Bible and start from there. And that's when things really changed. And that's when Satan really started to vamp up and use a lot of coercion and eventually bribery and then more coercion. Yes, because it's not the fairy tale story of everything became good. You learned about Jesus, started reading the Bible, and everything became perfect. This is not what happened with you. It put you in a arguably worse place than you were before, right? Yeah, very painful. And what did that look like? So every night I would have night terrors and it felt so real. Like I was being tortured. It would be like demons lead me and it, it, the dream feels good. It sounds good. seems like it's a good dream. And then all of a sudden I'm led into a dark path. Everything goes black. And then the demon can morph into anything it wants and cause you to have such fear 
And so that would happen every night. Like it would, ju- I was just being tortured, having evil dreams of like, for instance, like just a lot of gory things that happen, a lot of uh, necrophilia or uh, masochism, like stuff like that, just people harming themselves for sexual pleasure, just all sorts of evil things and, and night terrors that you can imagine, just disgusting things. And that would happen for every night for about two years, that would happen. Then after, you know, about once it got to two years, it lessened, like a year and three quarters to two years, then it lessened. And it's, I stopped having night terrors over, over, over time. Praise be to God for that, because it was, it was constantly, I would always wake up at like 2.33 in the morning and I would read the Bible because I got just in the habit of having such night terrors and I would wake up and I would just go to the Word of God to really comfort me. And I really loved the peace and how quiet it was. It really helped me to keep going. It gave me the strength. And so I would, I would read the Bible for like a few hours every morning. And that's really how I got through is through God, His Word, and you know, the Holy Spirit really helped me out. So that battle of tug and pull was not over at that time. And you were dealing with night terrors with sleep paralysis also, I think. And it was a very rough journey, which is something that most people don't know of, even Christians, especially the ones that grew up in the faith, obviously. But people don't always realize that for some, it's extremely hard to make that change in their life. And things don't all of a sudden become all sunshine and rainbows. No, far from it. It is so real. And it, you know, I with what I experienced, it was so real to me that I knew that when I gave my life to Christ, there was no going back. If I go back, I'm dead. I know too much. I know how real this is. And I made a promise that I will be faithful. I am devoting every day of my life to God to really serve Him. And so Satan really is doing everything to really try to separate me from God through lies, through uh, you know deception uh, earlier on. Uh, after the torture and whatnot, the coercion, he tried bribing me with anything I wanted, including uh, having children or woman, um, a monthly allowance and all that. But I knew when I was offered that by a high counselor, uh, basically a high level demon, and like I thought about it, it was so weird. It's a weird feeling when you're given a big bribe, you know, from a demon, especially like my stomach just dropped, but I knew instantly I already made my decision. And I just thank God for prudence, for wisdom and discernment because like, no, I choose Jesus, you know, because you're going to kill me. And if I even do survive three years is like that. I mean, I mean, it's already been four years with God and it went like that. It was just unwise to make that decision. So I told the demon and it was all in my mind while I was asleep. And so through t- telepathy, I, I, the demon and I were talking, but I said, I choose Jesus. And then I woke up six o'clock in the morning. It was light. So Satan uses, he has different powers, multiple ways. He tries to get people to join his side. <clears throat> and I experienced a lot, all of it. And what does your life look like now? What does your relationship with Christ look like four years after making that decision? So God has delivered me. <clears throat> from a lot of deceptions about him. Like I used to believe he was a dictator tyrant. So even though I accepted him, I've experienced his love, you still have to deal with these lies you've been conditioned to believe in. But like I said, one of them being that he's a tyrant, that he imposes rules and punishes people that f- don't fall in line. Basically Satan puts his character upon God and convince, convinces everyone, the whole world, that God is a dictator and an imperialistic dictator like Rome, like a Roman emperor. and Nowadays, Satan is trying to cause emotional trauma and really trying to mess with me on a deep level with desires that I have. <clears throat> so for me with God, it's it's been hard because you think you're good with God, but then you go through another trial and obstacles and you have to wait and be patient. And really the best word to use for it is long suffering, right? because it is extremely painful. So it's really hard, you know, I really, I deeply think about it, I'm like, man, faith is so much deeper than just saying I trust God. Like, you really gotta trust God, regardless with how you feel. 
regardless of what your thoughts are, how you try to justify doing your own way. And right now, God is, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> God is trying to strengthen my faith on a whole new level, whole new level. That's what right now, I'm, what I'm experiencing. And Satan is just trying to find ways for me to distrust God, to really just harden my, harden my heart towards God. Even though I promised I would be faithful, it's like Satan's trying to really mess with my mind, uh, you know, trying to get me to distrust God or not like God. And so to this day, Satan's still just messing, messing with me. Well, I want to encourage you to continue in that, in that faithfulness because the things that you're experiencing are painful, but they don't stop you. And I want to encourage you to continue going down that path because obviously this has delivered you from so many horrible things you were experiencing before. And it's it's a sacrifice in a sense, but I think you know that it's going to be worth it. Absolutely. You know, you pick up your cross, you die to self, you just keep going and trust God that he'll continue to mold and shape your your character to be more like Jesus. We got to focus on God and others and be other centered. You know, one thing that God revealed to me is, you know, he's like, Zach, you're, you're self-focused. And like you, you pray about yourself a lot and for yourself. And so it's like, you know what? I'm going to pray for others more. I'm going to pray less for myself. God will take care of me, you know? And so, you know, God is so awesome. He allows you to go through things and then he causes you to have a self-diagnosis. And it's like, wow, there's a lot more growth but it's well worth it, you know, when you see others being blessed from you being more Christ-like through the Holy Spirit. It's well worth it. It's well, well worth it. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Almost False Podcast. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more interviews like this. If you found this content valuable, please share it with a friend. It really helps us out a lot and hopefully it will help them too. If you want to be on the show, you can go to almostfalls.net and submit your story there. We would love to hear from you. With that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your day and stay blessed.